This is a documentary on Robert Louis Stevenson, who is one of the top 30 most translated authors of the world. Stevenson was born on November 13, 1850, in Edinburgh, Scotland. He was born healthy, but soon suffered breathing problems, which then developed into tuberculosis. This affected him his entire life. His father was Thomas Stevenson, a successful lighthouse engineer. His mother, Margaret Isabella Balfour, belonged to a family of ministers and lawyers. Talk about built for success. Robert's father wished for him to attend college to become a successful lighthouse engineer like he was. Stevenson had other plans. As he was there, he found a great interest in writing. His father did not like that, so they compromised. He would study law. Stevenson had passed the advocate, but due to the fact he still wanted to be a writer, he didn't practice. For summer vacation, Stevenson went to France with other students from the university, ranging from writers to painters and other artists. From this experience, he got his first publishing. It was an essay called Roads. It contained volumes of his travel writings. Also, while studying at the university, he dropped the religion of his parents, but still used the teachings from his childhood to influence him. He took up a branch of Christianity called Calvinism. Life changed once Stevenson met Fanny in France. They had to wait until she was divorced to marry, and once they were, they had to live in an abandoned silver mine. I see the only benefit to all these journeys and travels was that he completed three more writings. The Amateur Immigrant, Virginibus Purisk, and the Silverado Squatters. Fanny had two children from a previous marriage. One of them, Lloyd, wanted to have fun with Stevenson on one summer Scottish holiday. Little did either of them know that it would change Stevenson's life. One map was being created by the two of them. It was drawn out, colored, and annotated. This would be an imaginary representation of Treasure Island. Soon, Stevenson started creating a story for his family. There were pirates, battles, and some booty. This story is in the viewpoint of young Jim Hawkins. He has entered into the world of being a pirate and soon is always on the move. It was like Stevenson himself, where he was always publishing and becoming more successful as a writer based on his adventures. All the men reached Treasure Island on board Hispaniola. As Jim is wandering Treasure Island, he's faced with death and danger. This is like a mirror image of Stevenson himself. For all the new places he visited, such as California or even back to Europe where he started, he risked death from his poor health. When people imagine pirates, they see them always fighting for money like they did in Treasure Island. Well, I bet Stevenson saw regular people being the bloodthirsty ones for money. Parts of the first industrial revolution were still being put together, outshining farming. More labor was needed, and people were coming to try to get work to get money. Yeah, it's not bloody, but I can't imagine workplaces being too pretty. Treasure Islands is a successful book because it draws readers in with illusions, imageries, similes, and unusual yet interesting diction. Stevenson holds an important place in the history of the short story, The British Isles. Numerous stories were written by him but compiled into a volume entitled New Arabian Nights. One story, The Pavilion on the Links, was liked by another famous author. Sir Conan Doyle said himself it was the high watermark of Stevenson's genius. So it's safe to say by now Stevenson proved he can be successful and liked. He accumulated many stories of his travels, yet some are not exactly a vacation. If Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was a book written based on a vacation spot, well, remind me to never go there. So one night, two men, Mr. Utterson and Mr. Einfield, are taking their daily stroll. After passing a dark alley, the brutal story of a wicked man is brought up. A juggernaut walks straight into an over little girl. Her family is furious, and the man pays them a lot of money. The money comes from Dr. Jekyll's account. The only problem? He's liked and respected. 
where did this hideous, insane man named Mr. Hyde get the money? Was it blackmail? Many events happen after that. Dr. Jekyll is here one day, and no Mr. Hyde. Soon there's Mr. Hyde, and no sign of Dr. Jekyll. Well, it all simmers down to one confession. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are the same men. One is good, and one is bad. We all have a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde inside of us. Don't try to tell me that you're always good or always bad. Sure, murder may not be your thing. I sure hope not. But that isn't the only qualifier of being bad. Stevenson was very good at relating stories to real people. From seeing the green in people to their dual natures, he brought them to life in his stories. Readers might notice another thing that carries out in his stories. He doesn't include many women. In Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the maid cried for help in danger. Treasure Island, Jim's mom fainted at the pressure of escaping the cruel men. It was like he intended to prove men were stronger and better than women. He seemed to respect women, like Fanny, but in his stories he made women dependent on men. Stevenson was an excellent writer. He grew up with health struggles, which sadly ended up taking his life at a young age of 44. He lived a short, successful life and will be remembered by his great writings. And now the words from Robert Louis Stevenson. To become what we are capable of becoming is the only end in life. Looks like he became all he could.